right, so in this video, we will cover piecewise functions. Uh, well, sometimes a function is uh, it's defined through different equations on different parts of its domain. So like the functions we graphed before where we only graph a diagonal line, maybe a parabola, maybe the graph of a, of a radical function, and potentially some of their shiftings, of course, may come into play here. However, oftentimes functions are defined like having um, a diagonal line, for instance, within a given interval, and then a parabola on another interval, and then a horizontal line on another interval, of course, without ever overlapping or rather having the same, the same uh, different values of y for the same value of x, because that violates the definition of what a function is. Well, actually, the function you know very well, which is f of x equals to absolute value of x, which, which is very well known as the um, um, v-shaped function or the v-shaped graph. Well, let's, let's plot it real quick. So, okay, so that function actually happens to be a piecewise function because uh, yes, you know it as absolute value of x, the v-shaped function. However, um, it's it's comprised by two diagonal lines. Let me highlight each of the diagonal lines with different colors. Well, so the diagonal line with positive slope, but notice it's not the entire diagonal line. That's only the part of the line that goes between zero and infinity, right? So that is the diagonal line y equals to x. While, notice this diagonal line, uh, the, the, the left tail of the V-shaped function, it's a diagonal line with negative slope. Well, yes, negative slope right here. And notice how it is defined only for values that are less than zero. That is for negative values. All right, so now we can see that, um, that f of x equals a y equals um absolute value of x is really a piecewise function. It's just one of the simplest cases of a piecewise function. Now, let's get into actually graphing piecewise functions. Well, so a piecewise function would look like f of x, curly braces, and two or more equations with corresponding conditions. So that means we will graph um, 2x plus 3 for x less than negative 1 and 3 minus x for x greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, so, well, so here is the thing. Uh, in this case, these are two linear functions of the form mx plus b. Uh, yes, 3 minus x is one of those, but let's write it as negative 3x plus 3 to make it look of the form mx plus b. All right. So here is the thing. If we were to draw the graph of simply 2x plus 3, well, would you guys at this point know uh, how to graph the lines um, the, with different techniques? The shortest and quickest way to go about it is by going three units up to the y-axis and then use the slope m, which equals to 2, which is 2 over 1. That is, rise two units, run one unit, rise two units, run one unit, uh, or dive two units, reverse one unit, dive two units, reverse one unit, etc., etc. And I'm going to keep going um, or to, graph, to, to graph this line, all right? So let me draw the graph of the line the way we would have done it in the previous chapter, or rather the previous sections. So this would be the graph of the line for all real numbers. Now, here in piecewise functions, we need to take into consideration the condition. So for x less than negative 1, that means we're going to go to x less than negative 1, um, to x equal to negative 1, that is, at this point. So that means we want the graph that it's less that it lies for less less than negative one. And what are we gonna do? I'm going to erase. Uh, I'm gonna erase the part of the graph that we don't need here. All right. So, and notice in this case uh, the inequality. It says less only, not less than not less than or equal. So for this reason, we should represent this point as an open circle. 
right? So that is our uh, our first part or our first piece of the piecewise function. Let's graph the second piece. So for the second piece, uh, how about we graph negative x plus 3, where the plus 3 represents going 3 units up to the y-axis, and then negative, the negative x represents a negative 1, x plus 3. Here, the slope m equals negative 1, which is negative 1 over 1. Over 1, that means to go down 1 unit, run 1 unit, go down unit, run 1 unit, go down 1 unit, run 1 unit, go down 1 unit, run 1 unit, run one unit and so on and so forth, all right? Or, rise 1 unit, reverse 1 unit, rise 1, reverse 1, rise 1, reverse 1, and so on and so forth. But again, this is the graph of the whole function, right? For all real numbers. However, look at the condition for the second piece. This is for x greater than or equal to negative 1. So let's go to negative 1 and identify the y value right here. All right, we're going to we only we're only interested in all of the value in the graph that goes from negative one to infinity infinity that is the right part to negative one so we will erase the rest of the part because actually do you see the problem here how do we have more than one value for it each equal for each value of x so well again like i mentioned before that violates uh, the definition of a piecewise function. Now, be careful because in in the in the first part we represented this point as an open circle because it doesn't include the y value for x equals negative one. However, for the second part or for the second piece, it includes because of the equal part right here. So we will represent that with a with a full circle here. All right. And that is our graph of this piecewise defined function, all right? Actually, let's answer a couple questions about this function. So, number one, they're asking us to find f of negative 2. So that is, we're going to go to negative 2, and the y value is negative 1. F of, <clears throat> f of negative 1, we need to be careful here because there's two potential values, but actually at negative 1, we have this open circle, but we're going to go where it is defined. How do we know where it is defined? Where you see the solid point, which is y equals to 4. All right. And lastly, what is f equals f of 1? f of 1, that is the value of, one, of y when x equals to 1, which is in this case 2. Oh, wait, it's not 2. It's a 3, right? So it's at f of 3. That is f of 3 that equals to 0, not f of 1, right? Okay, let's have a look at a couple more examples. Well, what do we have? f of x equals to x plus 5. Uh, look at the condition. That condition um, in, it goes between negative 5 and 0, actually including the value of y at x equals, uh, x equals to negative 5, but excluding the value of y when x equals to 0. How do we know includes versus exclude? Well, includes when we have this equal and inequality symbol and exclude when we don't have the, um, the equal and the inequality symbol. Then we have this second condition or in third condition. So this time our piecewise function is comprised by three parts. All right, so number one, let's graph x plus 5. Um, x plus 5 where the slope is an invisible 1 that means we will rise one unit and run one unit All right let me let me write that invisible 1 so m equals to 1 which is the same the same as saying 1 over 1 so we're gonna go 5 units along the y-axis and then from there rise 1 run 1 rise 1 run 1 and so on or Dive 1, reverse 1, dive 1, reverse 1, dive 1, reverse 1, and so on and so forth. Just keep plotting all these points. And again, for, at first, I'm going to do the entire graph of the, of the linear function for all real numbers. Now, let's have a look at the condition. The condition here states that we only want the part of this diagonal line for the values of x between negative 5 and 0 making a solid point at x equals negative 5, but an open circle at x equals 0. So, 
let me go to negative 5 which is right here all right so uh, give me a second I don't know what's going on here all right so it seems like okay so at x equal to negative 5 um, which is here okay, let me delete that and I'm going to erase everything below x equals to negative 5 and everything greater than 0 we will represent at x equals to 0 an open circle in a solid bubble at x equals to negative 5 so that is the first piece of our piecewise function all right the second condition here it's an interesting one because how do we graph this equation um negative 3 if uh, x equals to zero. Well, this is actually just an order pair, right? This is y equals to negative three when x equals to zero. Or another way to graph this one, well, just graph y equals to negative three. Graph the, the horizontal line, so that corresponds to a horizontal line, y equals to negative three, which I'm gonna do with blue, all right? So y equals to negative three. That'll be the entire graph, but I only, and we're only interested in the point where x equals to zero. That is, to just erase everything else. All right. If you don't want to do the diagonal, the whole horizontal line, well, just simply interpret this as a um, as if it were just an order pair. That's e that's the easiest way to think about it. All right, so now that we plotted this um, this uh, this other function, negative 3 for x equals to 0, which is only one single point, well, let's plot negative 2x. That is, y equals to negative 2x. Negative 2x plus 0, if you will, that's just to write it in the y equals mx plus b form. All right, so where the y-intercept is at zero, all right, we're gonna go from there and then go, the slope in this case is negative two, which is negative two over one. So we're gonna go down to unit, run one unit, down to unit, run one unit, down to unit, run one unit, and so on and so forth, all right? So this would be, we do rise to unit, reverse one unit, rise to unit, reverse one unit, rise to unit reverse one unit and so on and so forth all right so let me do this part right here and then let me do um this other part right there oops all right but again look at the condition we all this would be the graph of the horizontal line or the diagonal line sorry uh for all real numbers however the condition here states that we only want the part that goes between zero and on but actually excluding the value for zero so we're going to zero that means we only want the graph to the right as it's pointing the inequality symbol as it indicates and i'm going to erase everything else all right I'm going to raise the part that goes to the left. And that is how we graph our second uh, piecewise function. However, be careful here because the origin here should be represented by an open circle. Because what does that say? X greater than zero. If it said X greater than or equal to zero, well, it should have been represented by a full circle. But actually, we can't um, represent it by a solid bubble here because we already have that point in the middle of nowhere here right so let's just go with that all right so that is our second example of a piecewise function let's have a look at the last one all right graph the following piecewise function negative x squared plus 9 if x goes between negative 4 including that value and positive 4 excluding including means solid bubble excluding means uh, open circle all right, so, and the second part to x minus 15, if x is greater than 4, or greater than or equal to 4. Okay, guys, so actually, uh, we're going to take a different approach here. So, this time, 
uh, I'm going to make a table of values for both of these functions. That is for, because, I mean, well, we, we could graph the 2x minus 15, but the problem here is our grid goes only uh, from negative 8 to 8, both in the x and y axis. So I wouldn't be able to go all the way to negative 15. So instead, we're going to make a table of values for each function. So number one, uh, again, notice the first part of the, fun the the first piece of the piecewise function, which is the quadratic, uh, is only defined to a limited um, interval that goes between negative 4 and 4. So I'm going to make a table of values for these guys. So x, uh, I'm going to go negative 4. I'm going to do negative 1, 0, 1, and 4. We don't need to do all these many values. However, if you want to do them, well, that's fine. But you might wonder, well, uh, x is not admitting this uh, upper bound of 4 because of the inequality symbol. Yes, you're right. We're going to we're gonna make the order, we're going to calculate the order pair, but we will represent it as an open circle still. All right. So y would be obtained by negative, negative 4 squared plus 9, negative, negative 1 squared plus 9, negative... 0 squared plus 1, or not plus 9, plus 1 plus 9, right? And uh, negative 1 squared plus 9, negative 4 squared plus 9, and that's going to give us the following result. Okay, so negative 4 squared equals to 16 times the negative in the front will become negative 16. Now, 9 minus 16, that's going to give us a negative 7, which is in our window for the graph, which is great. And then negative 1 squared, it's positive 1 times the negative in the front, it's negative 1 plus 9, that equals 8. All right. And then 0 squared is 0 times negative, it's still 0 plus 9, that equals to 9. And 1 squared is 1 times the negative in the front, is negative 1 plus 9, that equals to 8. And lastly, 4 squared equals to 16 times a negative in the front, that's still, that's actually negative 16, plus 9, that equals uh, negative 7. So let's use these order pairs to, um, uh, plot the, to plot the parabola. So x and y, these are the order pairs, so negative 4, comma, negative 7, right? And then let's do negative 1, 8, right? Negative 1, is that positive 8? Yes, all the way up here. All right. And then, um, what's the next point? 0, 9. Well, the point 0, 9 right here, we don't have enough grid for that one, but well, we can easily put that point right there on the cusp of the y axis, right? And then the point 1, 8 and 4, negative 7. Symmetry of points here. All right. So 1, 8 and 4 comma negative 7 so this would be the graph right this would be the graph it would look like this within this interval however we need to be careful that's because while in this case the lower bound has the less than or equal symbol we will in we will represent that with a with an open circle, with a full circle. However, on the upper bound right here, less than four does not include the equal. So we should represent this with an open circle. And we're done right here with graphing the parabola. All right, it's not the whole parabola. If it were the whole parabola, the entire parabola, it would continue like this and like that with the arrow indicating that both variables grow indefinitely. But that's not the case, all right, because that's only a piecewise function with restricted domains in each of its pieces. So number, uh, or rather part B, uh, 2x minus 15. Again, we don't have enough grid to go all the way to negative 15 and then rise over run to... Uh, to units per one, rise to units, 
run one unit and we don't have, we can to do that so in this case we're going to make a table of values starting at x equals to 4 and greater than or equal so we would do values greater than or equal so actually we don't need to do that many so x let's start with 4 and 5 let's do only these two you'll see how is that going to be more than enough um y equals to 2 x minus 15 all right so 2 times 4 minus 15 and um, 2 times 5 minus 15, all right? So 2 times 4, which equals to 8 minus 15, that equals negative 7 and 10. 2 times 5, which is 10 minus 15, that equals negative 5. So the order pairs we're going to plot right here are 4, negative 7. Let's go, off. <clears throat> Let's go about that. 4, negative 7 and oh look at this the open circle left by the parabola the upside down parabola gets filled in by the diagonal line and then at 5 so 5 negative 5 all right that'll be this point all right then from here i mean i guess we can i guess we already did the rise to unit run one unit you don't need to keep creating more values using a table just go with the slope Rise to run one, rise to run one, rise to run one, and just draw the graph of this diagonal line. And in this case, we indicate this with an arrow because our condition states x is greater than or equal to 4. That is all from 4 and on, right? That means it, it grows indefinitely. All right, so let's compare our different exercises right here. So uh, I would like you to see the di the difference between these two graphs. I'd like you to see how um, when we have a, a, a an upper bound or a lower bound where the function is not defined and gets represented by a full by a by an open circle, it is possible that a second piece may fill in that hole for that function. That's not always the case, as we can compare this to the previous example. See how. We have different jump discontinuities here. So like this second diagonal line didn't fill in the, uh, actually didn't fill in the um, the hole over there because well, actually it was a hole, all right? And the, and the other point was actually defined in the middle of nowhere. So let's just go back and leave it how it was, all right? And well, this concludes the piecewise function. So, okay, let's call it a day for this video.